now first of all when we are discussing about the cities what is a city how can you call this particular place as a city so as we know that we have a specifications for everything for everything we have characteristics so for boys we have certain features for girls we have certain features for every individual we have certain facial features which differentiate from one person to the other person every item has certain characteristics every fruit has its own characteristics in the same way if any place to be called as a city it should have certain characteristics so now we shall identify the characteristics of the city let us see here the characteristics of the city so when we talk about the characteristics of the city as we all know in the ancient period as well as in the modern period when we talk about the growth of human settlements i think you all know what is a human settlement the place where the human beings initially got settled the settlements later turned into towns and from towns they turned into cities so even today the world famous settlements are nearby to the water bodies or rivers and lakes example i would like to give ur and nipur in the western countries mohanjadaro in indian subcontinent so this ur nipur mohanjadaro all are river valleys only all proof for us that the modern cities are nothing but the culmination of certain new activities into the existing cities or into the existing villages let us put it as villages which got advanced then got named as cities so what are that that were added to villages to become a city let's find out them first of all a city is a place where you have certain people accessing political power in their hands a city is a place where you have certain people accessing the political power in their hands that is the first major criteria second one they have the administrative network with them they would like to have the administrative network with them third one trade religion they used to have from that particular city trade relations with the other countries with the other corners of the same country so that's how this city will be very famous with the connectivity of trade links and then we have religion the religious aspects religious worship places religious priests all these people staying in the city and it also consists of very large population as a common feature of a city industries opportunities businessmen small and large all these people buckled up together is called a city so in simple words we can say that a city is nothing but a village which used to be at the river valleys after a long period of time with the accommodation of more number of people and with the getting the people involved into the political power having the administrative network able to run the administration then moving on to the trade links establishing the trade links with the other places religion having the religious worship places religious gurus staying there and last but not the least growth in the categories of industries in the category of providing employment opportunities for the people from the nearby places these all together can be called as a modern world called urbanization in the modern world we call a city is nothing but a place which got urbanized from a village a village which got urbanized will be termed as a city so in order to understand the history of urbanization we need to focus or do a case study on one of the best cities in the world then you can understand how did the process of industrialization got developed or how was the process of industrialization or urbanization initiated first and how did it reach to the long journey was it was found today now what is the busiest city in the world i think you all know 
द मोस्ट हैपनिंग सिटी द बिजिएस्ट सिटी इज लंडन इवन ड्यूरिंग द नाइनटीन सेंचुरी और प्रेजेंट डे ऑल्सो द मोस्ट बिजिएस्ट प्लेस और द मोस्ट हाईली एडवांस्ड सिटी इज लंडन एंड द नेक्स्ट मोस्ट बिजिएस्ट सिटी और हाईली एडवांस सिटी मोस्ट कमर्शियल एक्टिविटीज गोइंग ऑन सिटी इन द इंडियन सब कॉन्टिनेंट इज मुंबई सो लंडन एंड मुंबई वुड बी और के स्टडी एस्पेक्ट्स टू अंडरस्टैंड द हिस्ट्री ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन विच हैपन इन द पास्ट टू हंड्रेड ईयर्स नाउ वी शैल डिस्कस अबाउट इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन एंड हाउ डिड द प्रोसेस ऑफ इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन गॉट इंफ्लुएंसिंग वन ऑफ द फास्टेस्ट ग्रोथ सिटीज ड्यूरिंग दैट सेंचुरी इवन टूडे ऑल्सो लंडन सो एज वी ऑल नो द प्रोसेस ऑफ गेटिंग इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन हैज बीन इन्वॉल्व फ्रॉम द प्रोसेस ऑफ इंडस्ट्रियल रेवल्यूशन इंडस्ट्रियल रेवल्यूशन इज अ चेंज फ्रॉम हैंड मेड गुड्स और द मैन मेड गुड्स टू अ प्लेस वेयर द मशीन डज एवरीथिंग सो फ्रॉम हैंड मेड गुड्स टू मशीन मेड गुड्स हाउ द ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन गॉट चेंज एंड हाउ डिड लंडन एक्सपीरियंस दिस वन दो लंडन हैज बीन वन ऑफ द सिटीज विच गॉट रेप्टेड अप एट द साइड ऑफ और द वैल्यू ऑफ रिवर थेम्स देन इफ यू लुक एट द मैप ऑफ लंडन ग्रोथ फ्रॉम सेवनटीन सेंचुरी एंडिंग इट स्टार्ट ग्रोइंग ऑन एज अ स्मॉल सर्किल टू अ वेरी लार्जर सर्किल सो हाउ इट गॉट ग्रोथ लाइक दैट how did the london was able to attract people from like that some of the historians remark this one in a different way let us see here most of the western cities are largely rural then why do we call them as cities we never call them as cities today we are calling them as cities but previously they were all rural areas and it was only an exemption to leeds and the manchester regions where you have the growth of cities where you have seen the establishment of some kind of industries some kind of recruitment for the people some kind of opportunities available for the people that is the reason why these places like leeds and manchester were been the industrial places or the business places from where the business can be done so as if you look at the statistics of the growth of the cities most of the people around london let us take the statistics of london here but before going to london we shall find out what happened in leeds and the manchester the leeds and the manchester were the cities where in 1851 in the year 1851 three fourth of the people migrated from rural areas to the region of the manchester on a hope on a dream to come here and lead a better life when compared to staying in the rural areas so that's how the initial stage of migration started towards the city of manchester now sir in manchester we have some industries because in the previous lesson also we have seen the competition from the local trade britain people always used to encourage their own products they used to put extra import duties on the indian products so that's what we heard about manchester it's fine then when it comes to london the concept is different because in london you don't have any large factories which provide opportunities for you because it is rightly remarked by stedman jones that london is a city of clerks shopkeepers small merchants small masters small sellers beggars it's a place where you find all small small things available it is not a city where you have large industries established so you can dream and come here on a job or an opportunity or to survive in a better place so here stedman jones point of view is that when we talk about any other city's growth in the world the process of urbanization or industrialization was always marked with a growth of a huge industry or an establishment of a huge industry but in london the case was different where the city was always branded with the city of clerks the city of shopkeepers the city of small petty workers 
the city of small skilled artisans so how can this city attract the people from various corners let us look at the statistics how the city got attracted towards itself in 1750 when the statistics were taken one out of every nine members in the society of england and wales islands you love to be in the city of london the city of colossal city the city of london if you look at the statistics still further in 18th century prior to this in 1750 as we discussed the population was around 6 lakhs 75000 but by the time it came to 1810 it reached to 1 million and in a span of 70 years the population went on up to four fold increase that is nearly four times 4 million was the population from 1 million to 4 million the population has increased it was a rapid change or attraction of the people then the fundamental question of doubt arises here sir you actually expressed your view that we don't have any large scale industries all are small so the city of clerks shopkeepers small masters street sellers and beggars so how can this city attract so much huge number of people we were talking about the situation in the 19th century where a million population was a population of a country so how can that much population got four times four folded extension to a 4 million what attracted the people towards london a serious study was made on this so it's not that something which attracted towards london the same industrialization attracted people towards london but the case is different here only thing is large factories or industries were not established then what were established we have five major industries the core industries to attract people to london the five major core industries are the cloth industry fine cloth cotton cloth fabric cloth has been initiated from london factories then we have the footwear industries coming forward the famous world famous footwear industries were located in london then we have the wood the furniture industries taking up ahead then we have the different metals and then the engineering products after all these things it is not left out we also have the precision what is a precision a precision is a combination of different goods again in precision we have the other small small industries coming up like surgical industry then the surgical machinery whatever you need for making surgeries for the medical equipment then the different objects whatever you need that are being produced in london then the precious metals what are available during that time in the market like gold diamond and all were also been exposed to the market from london and along with this with the world war 1 the london industries people started to manufacture motor cars and electric goods by 1914 so that's how they started to make a very large market that's the reason why people out of every nine one person used to wish to dream to to be in london because you have a galore of opportunities the opportunities are not restricted only to one factory one industry one particular categories of industries you have n number of industries in future where you have a growth you have a chance if not you can be a part of any of these sector you can be a clerk you can be a shopkeeper you can be a small master of your item you can be a street seller if not you can be a beggar a forced labor but you have the industries where large like cloth footwear wood furniture metal engineering possession coming under surgical objects and also the objectical industry then we have the precious metals like gold and diamonds so all these by 1914 they were also incapable of making motor cars and electrical goods so all these made them to realize that in london if we go there we can find one or the other job one or the other opportunity for us to survive that is the reason why people choose london to be their final destination from late 19th century that's how 
the population got tremendously into fourfold times increased. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus.